This film is part of an instructional series on fishing. With the help of some of America's greatest anglers, we will share with you several effective new fishing techniques, as well as methods proven by the test of time. All right guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you guys for watching. So, the weather's changing and I thought this would be a good opportunity. Uh, we actually had a really good sheephead bite yesterday and I thought this would be a good opportunity to go over some tips, some tackle for sheephead that, uh, that hopefully will increase your, your odds of catching and, and having a successful sheephead season. So the first thing I wanna talk about is I know in a lot of my videos, a lot of our videos we talk about um, talk about the rods we use and the rods we use for inshore fishing snapper fishing grouper fishing are all bull bay rods and these are also bull bay rods the rods I'm fixing to talk about but the difference is in these bull bay rods is we go to a lighter action these are this one is a bull bay assault 7 6 8 to 17 medium heavy fast this rod has got a lot softer tip than the rods that I normally show you guys when we're inshore fishing. So that's that's the first rod I want to show you guys. And the second one is one that I know is Jake's, it's absolutely Jake's favorite rod. If you if you catch him out fishing somewhere, this is what he's using for artificials. And, uh, and it's also a really good sheephead rod, is the Bull Bay Banshee 710, 6 to 12 pound, medium, extra fast. So what these rods have in common is both of them are medium extra fast. And what that does is that's gonna give you that sensitive flexi tip. It's a lot softer rod, like I said, than what we use when we're pitching bushes uh, for snook reds, you know, those type of fish, even snapper fishing. Because what I wanna do when I'm sheephead fishing is I wanna be able to, honestly, I wanna be able to feel that fish without that fish feeling me. Um, I think a lot of the problems with people sheephead fishing is they see those teeth on the sheephead and they feel like they've really got to set that hook to, to drive the hook home to get it between the teeth, knock the teeth out, whatever whatever you think you're doing a lot of times by setting the hook. And this is just something I find fishing with my customers that they seem to struggle with. So when I'm fishing sheephead, when Jake's fishing sheephead, when Christian Lugo's fishing sheephead, some of the best sheephead guys that I know when they're fishing sheephead. I'm gonna try to show you guys this rod tip. I don't know if you can see it, Jake. So basically, when the sheephead hits the bait, and that's why I like this soft tip because I can really tell. When the sheephead hits the bait, whether it's a shrimp, crab, whatever you're throwing, you're gonna feel that tap, tap, tap. And they're crunching on the bait. So a lot of times people wanna set the hook as hard as they can right then, I felt that tap, no, let that fish eat. So after that sheephead taps it a couple times and you feel that tap, let him eat, let him eat, let him eat, and all of a sudden you'll see this tip and you'll feel the tip slowly start gaining pressure and putting a bend in the rod. Now he's swimming away with it. So once that fish starts swimming away with it, fight the urge to really set the hook and all you wanna do, got some vehicles here in the background, we're in the parking lot. What you wanna do <clears throat> after you felt those taps, and that rod starts kind of loading up on its own and that sheephead swimming away with it is you want to reel into the fish lightly slowly reel into the fish allow that rod to keep bending keep bending keep bending and then just kind of lift into him almost almost like almost like a circle hook even if it's not a circle hook that's kind of the way we do it so like i said number one is with sheephead i want a really soft tip on the rod where I can really feel it. Um, the Banshee, the Assaults, the Medium, uh, what are they? They're Medium Extra Fast. Those are really good rods for sheephead fishing. Okay, so there we go. Number one, the rod. Second thing, sheephead I haven't found to be extremely leader shy like, uh, like Snapper are sometimes and stuff like that. So I'm good with my standard 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. 20 pound fluorocarbon leader is is money. Um, me personally, I do a lot of my sheephead fishing. I like the lighter wire J hooks. Uh, I can I can use circle hooks. They do work. This is a uh, this is a size one. 
I don't know if you can see that. That's a size one, uh, what are these, Jake? Tsunamis that we're using? Mm -hmm. Size one tsunami with just a little split shot on top of it. Basically the same kind of setup I'm using for pitching bushes. Uh, works fine for sheephead in certain situations, depending on current, water depth, those kind of things. So, all right, so we've got, uh, we've got 20 pound leader. We've got the rods covered. Now, this is this is one of the most important things that I want to talk about. This is why I started thinking about talking this, talking about sheephead techniques. Is uh, there's a lot of jig heads out there. A lot of jig heads out there. One jig head is not necessarily the jig head for everything. I see I see a lot of people do that, and and even when I'm sheep's head fishing, this is pretty much my sheep's head box. Let me show you guys this real quick. Jake, can you you want me to bring it to you? Okay, so this is pretty much my sheep's head box, I guess you could call it. And I have a lot of different jig heads in there, and there's a reason for that. So, me personally, if I'm finding my sheep head in, say, residential canals, somewhere where there's not a lot of wind, a lot of tidal flow, things like that, that is the perfect scenario for... Because again, like I've said in other videos, I want to go as light as I can possibly get away with, but still, you have to, to a point, you have to be able to feel the bite and feel the fish. So, low current, low winds, residential canals, small creeks, bridges, seawalls, where I can get away with it. That's when I use, uh, these are all Tampa Bay Fishing Channel jigs, Todd Fouché, you guys can check him out. Um, that's when I use the inshore slacker, 1 16th, and these have become some of my favorite sheep's head hooks. You see it's just a small weighted hook. It's a really light wire hook. So when I start lifting that rod, this hook's actually going to just kind of find its way between the teeth. And I've had a lot of success with that inshore slacker. It's a 16th ounce. I do have some 32 ounces in here or, or 3 30 seconds. But I like the 16th ounce. And like I said, again, this is for, I use these in low current, low wind situations where I can get away with a little bit lighter, lighter setup. And, uh, and those do really well. Uh, you know, like I said, what were we talking about? Uh, using them around residential docks, residential canals, seawalls, uh, places like that. Okay, so that is the inshore slacker from Tampa Bay Fishing Channel. That is probably my favorite sheep head setup. All right, but occasionally we fish deep. And when we fish deep, whether it's reefs, wrecks, rock piles, or anything else, then we kind of get away from that because that's just a lot of times going to blow out with the current. The wind's going to pull your line. You're not going to be able to feel the bite because it is such a sensitive, tiny, tiny bite. All right, so that's when I start going to something like this. This is a 3 8 Stewie jig. And it's basically just, it's a, it's a swing jig. And this also has that same small light wire J hook on it. So if I get out and say, you know, if I can get away with it in 10 to 12 feet of water, 10 to 15 feet of water, and the current's not moving that hard, and I know this will get me down, again, I'm gonna go as light as I possibly can to get down to the fish. So that's when I would use that. That's a 3 8 and like I said, it's got that little little hook on it that I like again. Um, my next step up from there, if I'm struggling with that one, is you can always go up to, you know, a, uh, a heavier Stewie jig. This is a three quarter, a little bit bigger hook. This is for windier days, rougher days, deeper water, more current, because I want that bait right on the bottom. I want that bait to get down to the bottom. Like I said, go as light as you can, but you still want to get that bait on the bottom. Now the next jig I want to talk about is something that I don't know why. Sometimes it makes a difference. I think, I, I personally think it's because of the way this one sits on the bottom when you drop it. This is a half ounce huggy jig is what they call them. And you can kind of see the angle of that, that jig head. How, so when that drops to the bottom, this jig head is going to sit like that. Now, if I'm fishing shrimp, I haven't I haven't really had a lot of experience with this setup using crabs because I'm usually using crabs around docks and stuff. So that's when I use the slacker jig. 
But this setup, when I'm fishing deeper and I'm using shrimp, I find that the way that that thing lays on the bottom, I guess I guess that's why it increases my bites. I think that's why it increases my bites because it's holding that shrimp up just a little bit off the bottom. It's not laying flat on the bottom. So you can see the way that one sits. And this again, like I said, is a half ounce. This will get you down in a lot of situations. You wanna use just enough weight to get down, hold your bait there, and still be able to feel the bite without the current moving it. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over some of our techniques for sheep's head because I know uh, I've had people messaging me and asking me questions and everything, and, and that's great. I don't mind answering questions at all. So feel free to keep the questions coming. I'll do what I can to help everybody. But, um, I just want to give you a real quick rundown of what we're doing for sheep's head season. As you can tell by the box, we're ready to go. This box doesn't stay on the boat year round. This is when the sheep heads start moving in. And, uh, and that's pretty much, you know, we'll get some snapper. We'll still be catching some snook reds. But grouper season is about to end, which is sad. I know a lot of people are sad about that. Uh, December 31st is the last day for that. So once grouper season ends, sheep head are going to become a primary target for a lot of people in the bay. They're delicious, they're fun to catch, uh, they're, they're easy to catch a lot of times. Just find yourself some structure and uh, drop a bait down. Make sure you're using enough weight to get down but not too much weight so you can feel the bite and enjoy getting out there and catching some sheephead. Right? Yep. Yep. Jake loves it. Jake loves it. You start getting those 20 inch sheephead, it is a blast. They fight hard and, and they're delicious. They've, they've got a face only a mother could love but uh, it's, it's kind of funny too. So I guess that's about it guys. Until next time, if I don't see you guys, you guys don't see me before Christmas and New Year's, I wanna wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. I hope the New Year is uh, blessed and prosperous for everybody out there. And uh, hopefully we'll get another video out before the New Year, but if we don't, Happy New Year, God bless everybody, and we'll see you guys on the water.